Should you buy a Proxon Micromil MF70? Yes, you should. Hello there, Carstairs here. So welcome to this video about this Proxon Mini Mill. Tiny little thing, so good quality. So executive summary, positives, very well made, good value for money, and overall it does a good job. Downsides, uh, top of the list, the size of the cutter that you can use with it, three mil, tiny. Um, the handles and wheels are uncomfortable to use and it makes a racket. So let's get into a deeper dive. So I've had this MF70 about three years now and I paid £250 for it. They're more like 300 now. But I have to say, I am really impressed with it. It's such a solid piece of um, machinery. Um, there's no flexing it. There's um, good casting, good thick casting there. Um, the ways are really nice. Obviously adjustable by Gibbs and the headstock. That's no problem at all. So let's just quickly go over what you get with the micro mill when you buy it. You get these um, clamps holding down work and a selection of collets and the collar there. Uh, now the main thing about this micro mill is the size of the bit that you can hold. The maximum collar size is 3.2 mil. Um, so um, realistically you're going to be using a 3 mil bit. Now Proxon do sell their own um, bits for this but they're quite expensive and what I, I ended up doing was buying these Presto 3 mil cutters um, now you've got to cut them in half because once you if you've got something that long once it hits the work it just goes boink and bends so but if you cut it sort of there then um, it will it will go in now you could just say why don't you just feed it further in and you can't because it seems to be tapered inside there and I suspect that's to stop you using other um, third-party um, mills also you can get um, these fairly cheaply on Amazon etc um, with the three mil shank on them these are quite nice mills actually um, they're, they're lovely these Presto ones make a lot of mess and it's very very sharp and you, you get it into your skin the the swarf that comes off this and you're picking it out um so i have actually switched to using those with this micro mill so the biggest bit you're going to be using um with the stock collet system is three mil um, which is of course tiny but I am aware that there are upgrades available for the Proxon which allow you change the spindle and you can use uh, the ER11 collet system which increases your capacity by a lot so I've got a mill bit that I cut in half and uh, it just slots in and then we can Put it in and start to tighten it up. You do get spanners included with the mill, but I've lost them, so I'm using these bigger ones, which are actually better. And it's a real pain with the two spanner system. So now, obviously, what you need to do first thing is to screw it down to a sturdy bench because um, it can wobble a lot, you know. If you so, you need it to be screwed down quite firmly. What uh, what I have found to be problems are, number one, the biggest problem is this screw here. There's a screw that goes in there and it clamps the head. So when you adjust your head down and you clamp it up so that the head doesn't drop. Now, when the head does drop 
and your work suddenly slopes down, it is a nightmare. Ask me how I know. So the screw that came with it was just a recessed ordinary machine screw that they'd put a plastic disc over with some knurling. And the plastic disc didn't hold the screw tight enough, so you could never screw the, the screw onto the gib to hold the head straight. So what I've had to do is just buy a replacement. Fortunately, it's a standard machine machine thread, three mil machine thread. And this just screws in and tighten it up and you can't move the head. Um, now obviously you can you can tighten it with um, with the gibs but obviously you, you don't want to make that so tight that you can't easily move the head so you know clamping it down while you're actually working is the best option so other things that aren't so brilliant on this a piece of plastic chipped out of there uh, the way covers uh, there were some way covers that went there. One of them came out of its guide and wouldn't allow the table to come back and forwards properly. So I took all this apart. I thought, oh, I'll just re reinsert it. Couldn't do it. It had warped. So I had to do a, a way cover delete on that. Um, see down... There, another piece of plastic chipped out of there. A good thing about this is this XY table is just bolted on to the base there, so you can take it off and you could use it in other applications. And Proxon do actually sell just the XY table for that um, particular use. So let's talk about these handles. These are the original handles for the wheels that came with it and they're just no good at all. Your fingers and your hand just end up getting so cramped because you, you just, you've just got such a small sort of radius to turn and if you're moving the, the table backwards and forwards a lot, it, you soon get very, very tired of it. Now I've made bigger handles they have helped somewhat you can get uh, bigger handles from the place that does the upgrade to the spindle so I'm going to look into that but yeah it, it's out of the box it's not ideal and I can see why a lot of people do do the CC uh, CNC conversion on these because turning that handle and and the one on the side there is not great. So the table's good, it doesn't move, and it moves nicely. Nothing wrong with it at all, which is obviously essential when you're milling. So let's just talk about the vice here. This is a Proxon branded vice. It's an accessory, it doesn't come with the machine. They're about 40 quid, but they are worth it. It's beautifully made. And it comes in this rather pointless, but nice wooden case. So I'd really recommend one of these because originally I was using this old machinist vice, which is obviously too big and I didn't have much movement X and Y with it. So upgrading and getting the um, vice that's meant for it is well worth it. Let's talk about these controls here. Dead simple, on off and speed control. That's, that's on minimum. And take it up to maximum. Now the downside to this is it makes a racket. I've lowered the volume there but this is what it sounds like without lowered volumes. If you're using headphones, whatever, just three, two, one. It is a very nasty sound, but there we are. So 
if you're making small parts then this machine is ideal i bought it originally to make the flats on nipples now you can do everything on the lathe but you can't obviously do the flat bits there unless you use a file which isn't ideal but if you're making small parts then it's great the real problem is the size of the bit you can hold three mil it's it's poor and you need to take it steady with it as well but if you do the upgrade or i'm planning to do the upgrade to the spindle hopefully i'll be able to mill bigger pieces i'd like to make a a, a block to delete the compound on my mini lathe with a three mil with a three mil cutter it's just just impossible you know the, the block's going to need to be like that so yeah that, that's 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 its biggest drawback is the size of the cutter other than that apart from the few odd things that i've pointed out no problem at all so it's well built i wouldn't say it's even now at 300 pounds i wouldn't say it's expensive because the quality is there quality is there um and what other options have you got really uh, you'd be looking at a chinese mini lathe which what well, i don't know how much they'd be now seven eight hundred pounds something like that but if you're making small parts then i would say this is the go-to because you won't have any problems with it hope you've enjoyed that found it interesting uh, please like and subscribe links to buy me a coffee are down in the description below thanks for watching